Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the Solano College Sports Network as we present Solano College Baseball here at Billy and Louise Yarborough Stadium. Well, thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Greg Poff here on the Solano College Sports Network, and we've got a dandy of a ball game for you this afternoon as the Mission Saints come in with their 4-1 and one record. They'll take on the Solano Falcons. Falcons thus far this season, 3-1. and one. Now, for the starting lineups first, for the Mission Saints, leading off, number four, Eugene Kim. He'll be out in left field, batting second, number six at shortstop, Gordon Deacon. Batting third, number 22, Danny Miller. He'll be at first base, the designated hitter, batting fourth, number 23, Chris Gomez. Batting fifth in right field, number 27, Aaron Lefevre. Batting six, number 25, Joe Olmos. He'll be in center. Batting seventh will be Peter Dana, the catcher, number five. Batting eighth, Ray Fuentes. He'll be at third base. He's number 12. And rounding out the lineup for the Mission Saints, number seven at second base, Renee Reyes. And on the mound, number 35, Kyle Fembrez, comes in with a 1.00 ERA. No decisions. He has pitched nine innings and has one save on the season. Now, for the Solano Falcons, leading off in center field, number 17, Jordan Tolbert. Batting second, number six in right, Zach Wells. Batting third at first, number 22, Alex Crosby. Batting cleanup, the freshman at third, number one, Tucker Bishop. Batting fifth, out in left field today, Nick Spinney, number 11. Batting six at second base, J.Q. Justin Quilleton. Batting seventh, getting into the starting lineup today, designated hitter number 29, Matt Mitchell, and... Batting eight, that shortstop, number two, David Fernandez. Batting ninth, the catcher, number 21, Aaron Brasher. And on the hill for the Falcons today will be Nick Driscoll, the sophomore out of San Marin, comes in with an 0.00 ERA, no decision, seven innings pitched on the season. He has given up a run and three strikeouts. Now, before we get our broadcast underway, here's a special message from one of our Solano Falcons right fielder, Zach Wells. I'm Zach Wells. Thanks for watching the Solana College Sports Network. <laughs> well, like Zach Wells, we thank all of you for checking us out here on the Solano College Sports Network, our YouTube broadcast of Solano Baseball, and we are set to get things underway. Nick Driscoll on the mound for the Falcons and leading off for the Saints. Eugene Kim, the left fielder, comes up hitting 263. Driscoll set, first pitch, and it's hit out towards right center. Wells going back. He's not going to get there. This bounces off the wall. Kim heading for two, and he'll stop there with a stand-up double. So Eugene Kim has got the Saints in the right direction. Big leadoff double to get things started here for Mission at Billy and Louise Yarborough Stadium. Game just underway. Mission Saints off to a hot start this season, four and one on the season. They swept Las Madonnas eight to six, six to five. Beat American River, getting a run home in the bottom of the ninth to win that one, two and one, and then split with number six Merced, one six to five. Or excuse me, lost six to five, one four to two. All right, Driscoll set and the first pitch to Gordon Deacon. A little bit outside for a ball. Looked like Deacon squaring around a bunt there. Gordon Deacon comes into this afternoon's contest for the Saints, hitting just 200 on the season. And the next pitch, high and outside for a ball. So Driscoll's first pitch to Kim was greeted with a double in the gap in right center. And now two balls to Gordon Deacon. Beautiful Tuesday afternoon here on the campus of Solana Community College. Throw over, but Kim back in time. Throw to David Fernandez, the shortstop, getting over there. Kind of bird-dogging behind Kim. Driscoll now pitching out of the stretch. Checks the runner. And here's a 2-0 pitch. Goes down a bonnet, but bunts it foul. So that'll be 2-1. and one. Eugene Kim, just a freshman over at second base at a Homestead High School. Gordon Deacon, a sophomore, out of Homestead as well. So the two former high school teammates trying to get things going for the Saints here. Top of the first, no score. Nobody out. 
Driscoll taking his time. Checks the runner. And the pitch. Outside for a ball. Pretty close pitch. Good eye by the shortstop, Deacon. Count now three and one. And certainly Driscoll doesn't want to walk Deacon, but not the worst thing that could happen. Put runners on first and second. And this one hit into right field. Wells going back. Keeps going back over by the foul line. Makes the catch. Slips and falls. And Kim tags up easily and scampers down to third. So Deacon does his job. Gets the sack fly. And moves the runner over. Now up. Probably the best hitter for the Saints. Danny Miller coming in, hitting 312. Exactly what you want. One of your best hitters coming up with runners in scoring position. With just one out here in the top of the first. Danny Miller, 5 for 16 on the season. Has three runs batted in. Has three doubles already in five games. Driscoll set, and the pitch, a little bit low for a ball. So one out here, top of the first. Saints trying to get something going here. Kim let off with a double. Went to third on the sack fly to right by Gordon Deacon, and now Danny Miller at the play. Here's the next pitch, and it's hit sharply to Crosby. Takes a bad bounce, but he goes down and gets it. Touches the bag and holds the runner. Excellent play by Alex Crosby at first. And that's why the sophomore is preseason All-American for the Falcons, along with Zach Wells in right and pitcher Ryan Anderson, who's really had his struggles in his two starts. So big out for the Falcons. Two outs now. And so unassisted ground ball to Crosby by Danny Miller. Gets the second out. And now Chris Gomez, the designated hitter at the plate. First pitch at the knees. Gets the outside corner. Nice pitch by Driscoll. Boy, if Driscoll could get out of this jam, that'd be something. Kim let off the inning with the double, standing on third with just one out. But sharply hit grounder. Well played by Crosby. Retires Danny Miller. Kim has to stay at third, and Driscoll needs one more out to get out of this jam. Takes a little off that one, just a little bit low. Pretty good pitch by Driscoll. He's thinking, I'd like to have that one. Count now one and one. So this is the sixth game for the Mission Saints, fifth game for the Falcons. Season just underway. Driscoll takes a little off that one as well. Catches the outside corner. Nice pitch by Driscoll. Count now in his favorite, one and two. Chris Gomez, no average. He's 0 for 1 on the season. Pretty good pitcher also for the Saints, Chris Gomez. Takes something off that one, bounces in front of the plate, but Brasher, good job getting in front, blocking that ball, keeping it in front of him. Does not allow that run to come home. So the count stays at Two and two, or actually count now goes to two and two. Two outs. Two, two, two. 23 on the mound. 23 at bat. And here's a pitch. A little off that one. Outside and low for a ball. So that'll even the count, or excuse me, count full. Three balls, two strikes. Got Katrina Bumgartner on the camera today. First baseball game, did a great job filming the Solano women's game on Friday night. Check that out on our YouTube channel. And that one low for a ball. And so Gomez aboard with two outs. Runners on the corner now. And Aaron Lefebvre, the right fielder, comes up to bat, hitting 294 on the season. So Driscoll was ahead in the count to Gomez. Two balls, one strike, but then Gomez gets away. Good job of hitting by Gomez. Works a two-out walk. And now Aaron Lefebvre at the play. Driscoll set. Pitching out of the stretch. Checks the runner and the pitch. Letter high fastball. Good pitch by Driscoll. Count 0-1. Get yours, baby. Get yours out. Let's go Aaron Lefebvre 
Sophomore out of Pioneer High School. 6'3", 215-pounder. Pretty good power. Already a home run on the season. Four runs batted in. Like to get another one here. And laces this one into left field. And the left fielder, Nick Spinney, goes over, stays with it, makes the catch. So Driscoll in a bit of, a tru in bit of, in a bit of trouble, but able to get out of the jam. No run scored at the end of a half inning of play. No score. No score. All right, leading things off for the Falcons will be Jordan Tolbert. He'll be followed by right fielder Zach Wells and then Alex Crosby. Nice play by Crosby defensively at first. Really saved the Falcons a run in that inning. And now on the mound, Kyle Fimbres, number 35. Tolbert already around a bunt. That pitch a little bit low for a ball. So Kyle Fimbres... 1.00 ERA, no decisions. Nine innings pitched on the season. That one just above the knees for a strike. Nice pitch by Fimbres. Fimbres just a freshman out of Oak Grove High School. Fimbres set and the pitch. This one popped up, but it'll be out of play over to the first base side of the field. Mission College in their black and gray unis. Got the black tops with the silver numbers, white trim, and Solano busting out the light blue jerseys today with the white pants. Fimbres ready. Next pitch high and tight for a ball. So the count now two and two. Jordan Tolbert so far this season, season kind of rotating with Gio Torres. Today gets a start in center field. Next pitch, good eye by Tolbert. That one a little bit outside for a ball. So the count now full. Tolbert, outstanding speed. Could be the fastest guy on the Falcon team. Stover would love to get him aboard here. Next pitch, pop back, out of play. Over behind our Solano College Sports Network broadcast booth. So the count remains full. No score here. Bottom of the first game just underway. Bottom of the first, that is. All right. And Fimbra's ready. Here's the pitch. Swing just got a piece of it. Tolbert stays alive. Tolbert out of Vacaville High School. Just a freshman. Two for 12 thus far this season. Does have a run batted in. A walk and two strikeouts. All right, Fimbres ready. And the pitch. Low for a ball. So Falcons have the leadoff runner aboard. Eugene Kim did the same thing for the Saints. Leading off the game with a big double to get aboard to start the top half of the first. Saints couldn't get him home. And now Jordan Tolbert on first base with the walk and now Zach Wells up at the plate hitting 389 preseason NorCal All-American for the Falcons and Wells off to kind of an All-American start for the Falcons lays down a bunt Fimbres falls off the mound goes to the second baseman who flips over to Danny Miller gets the out and so if Fimbres comes off the mound cleanly, that ball was hit hard enough, might have had a chance to get Tolbert at second, although pretty difficult because Tolbert runs so well. So Wells does his job, wasn't pretty, but gets the sacrifice bunt down, gets Tolbert over to second, and with one out now up to the plate strolls number 22, Alex Crosby. So Renee Reyes at second base ends up with the assist. Danny Miller gets the put out at first. Jordan Tolbert now standing at second. Very little breeze today blowing out towards left field just a bit. Alex Crosby, the left-hander, steps in and he rips this one and, and it gets to Reyes. The second baseman flips to Miller and that gets a second out in the inning. But all the while, Tolbert scampers down to third. So Renee Ray is busy over at second. Two assists in a row. And two outs 
for Fimbres. Needs to get one more to get out of this inning. And the freshman, Tucker Bishop, steps in at the plate, hitting 4-12 for the Falcons. Fimbres ready. And the pitch, a little bit low. Good job by Dana, the catcher. Kept that one in front of him. Do not want to let the ball get to the backstop with the blazing speed of Tolbert on third. All right, count one and O oh to Tucker Bishop. Fimbres ready. And the pitch just outside for a ball. Boy, that was pretty close. Good eye by Bishop. Fimbres thinking I'd like the count to be one and one now instead of two and oh. Tucker Bishop just looking for a pitch. He can drive somewhere, get that run home. Here's the pitch by Fimbres, and he hits it. But right to the pitcher, Fimbres sticks out his mid and Look what I found. Nice reflexes by the pitcher. Gets him out of the jam, and at the end of one inning of play, no score. All right, so Joe almost getting things started here for the Saints. Top of the second. First pitch outside for a ball. So the Saints will send up Olmos, then Peter Dana, and then Ray Fuentes. No score here. Second inning just underway. Line drive, and that'll get by JQ over at second into right field. So second inning in a row. Saints have the leadoff runner aboard. That's the second hit given up by Driscoll. To go with a walk he gave up in the first, but no runs scored. And now Peter Dana, the catcher, coming up, batting 176 on the season. Peter Dana, number five, three hits out of 17 at bats, has scored three runs. And he's a sophomore out of Los Gatos High School. Next pitch, it's a lazy fly ball. In comes Tolbert with that speed, he should get there, calls it. And 25 has to scamper back to first, so almost gets back to first. Little flare to center field. Nice play by the freshman out of Vacaville coming in to make the catch. And with one out, runner on first now, Ray Fuentes at the play. Fuentes hitting 3.33 on the season. Fuentes number 12. Does have a run batted in already this season. Just a freshman out of Milpitas High School. First pitch by Driscoll catches the outside corner. First strike. Good pitch by Nick Driscoll. Still not much of a breeze. Just a warm, wonderful Tuesday afternoon. And this one is hit to the pitcher. Driscoll, he'll throw to second. Pulls him off the bag but gets the call. And no throw by Fernandez over to first. So that'll be a force out. That'll be the second out in the inning. And now Rene Reyes, the number nine here, batting 400, comes up to the plate. So almost still at first base. So two outs. So Driscoll once again after getting the leadoff man aboard, trying to get out of an inning without giving up a run. Needs one more out to accomplish that. That one in the dirt, nice job by Brasher blocking the plate. Almost no stolen bases on the season, just in case you're wondering. Almost over at first. Average lead, Crosby holding him on. Driscoll set, and the pitch. A little bit inside for a ball. Count now two and up. Renee Reyes, even though he's the number nine hitter, hitting 400 on the season. Six hits and 15 at-bats. Does have a run batted in. Here's a pitch by Driscoll. Runner goes. Throw down by Brasher. Not in. Oh, he gets him. Boy, I thought that almost got in under the tag, but good throw by Brasher just in time to retire the runner. So once again, Driscoll, after giving up a hit to the leadoff runner, able to get out of the inning without giving up a run at the end of one and a half innings of play. No score. All right, so Nick Spini getting things started for the Falcons. Spini out in left field today. 
usually in the starting lineup as the designated hitter, but getting the start in left, he'll be followed by JQ, Justin Quilleton, and then Matt Mitchell, the designated hitter. First pitch. Outside for a ball, count 1-0. and No score here. Bottom of the second. Two pretty good teams going at it. Swing and a miss by Spini. Good pitch by Fimbrez. Fimbrez, the freshman out of Oak Grove. Made that sensational play to get out of a jam in the bottom of the first. Snared that line drive off the bat of Bishop. All right, here's the next pitch to Spini. And that's right down the middle of the plate for a strike. Count now one and two. Spini hitting 188 on the season. Out of Army O High School. A little bit low. Good eye by Spini. Count now two and two. In 2011, Spini's senior year hit 367. 18 runs batted in. Next pitch. Good eye by Spini. That one low. So the count now three and two. Spini was down one and two in the count. Now he's got it in his favor at three and two. Fimbres set. And the pitch. This one ripped, but right to the second baseman Reyes. He's going to flip over to Danny Miller. And so, boy, the second baseman has been busy. Reyes, that's his third assist in the game. As we're just in the bottom of the second. Now coming up to the plate, Justin Quilleton. Playing second base, hitting 333, off to a pretty good start this year. JQ, as he likes to go by, 7 for 21 on the season. Does have a home run, four runs batted in. First pitch by Fembres. Boy, looked pretty good, but doesn't get the call. Ball one. JQ set. Here's Fimbres and the pitch. And that one catches the outside corner for a strike. Count one and one. Fimbres set. And the pitch. A little bit high. So the count now two and one. The Mission Saints play in the tough Golden Gate conference. Chabot, San Mateo, West Valley, all in that conference, all good baseball teams, along with De Anza and City College of San Francisco. Swing and a miss by JQ. So that'll even the count at two and two. Already one out. Nick Spini started the bottom of the second by grounding out to second baseman Rene Reyes. Count two and two to Justin Quilleton. Next pitch by Fimbres, fouls this one out of play. Just past the dugout for the Mission Saints over in the first base side. Mission Saints have to be very pleased with their start this year. Starting off four and one, coming off a 13 and 23 season in 2012. That pitch in the dirt. So the count now three and two. In 2012-2011 mission, 13 and 23, both of those years, both times finished fourth in the Golden Gate Conference. All right, count full. Nobody on. One out here, bottom of the second. Fimbra set. And the pitch to Quilleton. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Strike three. So that's the first strikeout for Fimbres. Fimbrez on the season in nine innings of work coming into today's game had 11 strikeouts. So he can get the K if he needs it and gets JQ swinging for the second out. And now the hot hitting Matt Mitchell, the designated hitter, getting into the starting lineup for the Falcons today. Kid out of Bethel fouls the first one out of way. You look at Matt Mitchell and he just looks like a ball player. Kid is put together, very athletic, good kid too, good in the classroom, and he has been off to a really solid start for the Falcons. 
He's been up five times, has two hits, one double, and an RBI. Had a big RBI in that opening game against DVC in the 20th inning. Swing and a miss there. Looked like Thimbrez took a little bit off that pitch. So the count now 0 and 2. Two outs here. And Fimber is trying to get through the lineup. One, two, three. Here's the next pitch. A little bit low. Good eye by Mitchell. Mitchell, as I mentioned before, just a freshman out of Bethel. About 5'11", 220 pounder. Just a real solid athlete. And was it a guy that Stover was sure was going to see a lot of playing time this year. Next pitch, bounces in front of the plate, hits Dana off the helmet, and almost bounces out to the mound to back to Fimbres. Matt Mitchell's first time up was in the top of the 20th when the Falcons had already taken a one-run lead in that inning against DVC off, to, off of Justin Quilleton's home run. And then after another runner got on board, Matt Mitchell doubled him in for an insurance run. Falcons won that game in 26 to four. And then won their second game the same day, beat DVC eight to seven. And then last Thursday, they beat San Mateo, scoring four in the bottom of the ninth to come back and beat San Mateo. Lost to San Mateo though, 17 to eight on Saturday. This one fouled away, so. Matt Mitchell staying alive, good at bat for the freshman. Count still two and two. Two outs here in the second. Mitchell just trying to extend the inning. If Mitchell gets on David Fernandez, the shortstop, coming up next. All right, 2-2 two -two pitch. And that one's in the dirt, low for a ball. So the count now full. Matt Mitchell at one time in the in the at-bat was down. No balls, two strikes. Able to work his way to a full count. Fimbrez would like to end the inning right here. Here's a 3-2 pitch. And just outside for a ball. Boy, pretty good take by Mitchell. That was a close pitch, but good eye by the freshman and keeps the inning alive. Trots down to first, and up comes David Fernandez now. David Fernandez, the starting shortstop for the Falcons, one of those talented freshmen out of Army O High School. Hitting 385 in his freshman campaign so far for the Falcons, five for 13, three walks, 500 on base percentage. Katrina Bumgartner, a camera person, knows all about the on base percentage, doing her research, getting the stats down, and. We might get a chance to get Katrina Bumgartner calling the game in a little bit. One of our many students in the Solano College Sports Network doing an outstanding job bringing you all of the Solano Sports home games. Also a pretty good public speaker for the nationally renowned Solano Community College speech and debate team. All right, we're all set after a little chat by the head coach with Fembras. Fembras ready to go. And David Fernandez steps in. Matt Mitchell on first, two outs. Fembras out of the stretch. This one is ripped over the shortstop Deacon's head into center field. Mitchell will hold at second. So Fernandez, after the two out walk to Mitchell, laces a base hit into center field. So runners on first and second. And now Aaron Brasher coming up to the plate, the number nine hitter for the Falcons. Aaron Brash will take just a second. Of course, he's the catcher. And with two outs, thinking when Mitchell was up, he's getting his gear on, ready to go. But now he's got to take it off, get up at the plate, and hopefully do something to get the Falcons on the board. Fimbrez, of course, for the Saints, would like to prevent that. Brasher off to a slow start at the bat this season. Brasher hitting... .077 as he takes that first pitch outside for a ball. Count 1-0. and oh. Brasher did get his first hit, though, on Saturday in that 17-8 loss to San Mateo. 
So big spot here for the sophomore catcher. Brasher, another one of those outstanding athletes playing for the Falcons. This one a little bit inside for a ball. So the count 2-0. Oh. Fimbres was just cruising through the inning. Started off getting Speeny to ground out to Reyes at second and then struck out Justin Quilleton, but then gives up the walk to Matt Mitchell. Base hit by Fernandez, and now a little bit of a jam. Needs to retire Brasher to get out of this inning. Swing and a miss. Good pitch by Fimbres. Count now two and one. Looked like Fimbres just challenged him that time. Fastball at the knees. Big swing by Brasher, but comes up empty. Brasher gets a hold of one. He can give it a ride. Throw over. Mitchell back easily. Ray is the second baseman covering for the Saints. So you got Danny Miller at first. Renee Ray is at second. Gordon Deacon at short. Ray Fuente is the third baseman. Peter Dana behind the plate. Kyle Fimbrez the pitcher. Fimbrez checks the runner and the pitch. That's high for a ball. Count now three and one. Eugene Kim in left for the Saints. Joe almost in center. And Aaron Lefebvre in right. Kyle Fimbrez, the freshman, trying to get out of this little jam here in the second. No score. Bottom of the second. And here's a pitch by Fimbrez. That'll be low for a ball, so Brasher will take his base. And so, as I mentioned before, it looked like Fimbrez was going to be out of this inning. It looked like it was going to be rather quick. But now, after a two-out walk, base hit, and another walk, bases are full, and Jordan Tolbert... Strolls up to the plate. Tolbert worked his way into a walk in the first inning. And now a big chance for the freshman out of Vacaville. Here's a pitch by Fimbres. Catches the outside corner for a strike. Nice pitch by the freshman. All right, Fimbrez ready. And 0-1 pitch, outside for a ball. Count now even, one ball, one strike. Matt Mitchell at third, Fernandez at second, Brasher at first. Really good speed on the base pass. Here's the next pitch, and this one is ripped, but right to the pitcher again. Fimbres is going, oh my goodness gracious, and snares another one to get out of a bases loaded jam in the bottom of the second. So at the end of two innings of play, still no score. All right, so Fimbres, after getting out of another jam with an excellent defensive play on the mound, we head into the top of the first. Still no score, and Renee Reyes. Leading things off and hits a chopper, but that's going to be foul. Reyes, of course, was at the plate in the top of the second when Joe Olmos was caught stealing, thrown out by Brasher to end the inning. So Reyes back at the plate again. And that's always a nice opportunity, get a chance to see a few pitches from Driscoll and then come up and lead off the next inning. So the count, 0-1, oh that pitch over for a strike. Saints have to be counting their lucky stars. Next pitch, and this one is ripped into left field. Speeney will come in and get it, so Renee Reyes keeps his hot hitting going and gets a base hit here to get things started in the top of the third, and for the third inning in a row. Saints have the leadoff runner aboard with a hit. Boy, if Driscoll can just retire the first batter in each inning, he's really going to set himself up to do well. He's been able to get out of the first two innings, though, without giving up a run. He'd like to do the same thing here. So Ray is aboard, and now up to the plate. Eugene Kim lays down a bunt. Driscoll fields it, throws to Crosby, and Kim does his job with the sacrifice bunt and moves Ray is over to second. So sacrifice, that's the pitcher Driscoll. 
over to Crosby. That'll be the first out in the inning. And Ray is now in scoring position, and Gordon Deacon comes up to bat. The shortstop, hitting 200 on the season. Had a sacrifice fly back in the first to move Kim over to third base after Kim opened up the game with a double. Driscoll checking Reyes. Now the pitch. A little bit inside for a ball. Count 1-0. and oh. Solano Falcons come into this game. They were ranked number 19 in the Northern California preseason poll. All right. Driscoll taking his time, really keeping an eye on Reyes. Now the pitch. Looked like he took a little off that one. It was a little bit high. Count now 2-0. In the on-deck circle, Danny Miller. So Reyes started the inning with the base hit, able to move to second on the sack. Bunt by Eugene Kim, and now a chance for Gordon Deacon. All right, takes that next pitch for a ball. Count now 3-0. Mission in 2010, only 5-29 and on the season. That pitch over for a strike. Good pitch by Driscoll. Mission coached by Michael Luna. Assistant head coach Mike Perez, longtime baseball coach at West Valley before coming over to Mission and now the athletic director at Mission. All right, Driscoll ready. And here's a 3-1 pitch, and this is hit to Crosby. He'll throw over to second to Fernandez, but gets by him out into left field. No chance for Reyes to advance, though. So big out by the Falcons. That's the second out in the inning on the line drive. And now Danny Miller comes up to the plate with Ray is still at second. So there have been some hard hit balls by both teams with runners in scoring position, but not able to penetrate the defense. Another hard ball hit at Crosby, and of course we know how the last two innings have ended for the Falcons with line drives back to the pitcher, Kyle Fimbres, who was able to handle each of those flawlessly to get out of jams. So both teams have had chances, have hit the ball hard, but just nothing to show for it thus far. Driscoll fakes the throw. Reyes gets back easily. And got Fernandez, the shortstop, kind of bird-dogging behind him, behind him. Hope you're enjoying the game thus far on the Solano College Sports Network. Driscoll set. That pitch low for a ball. So the count now one and oh. Danny Miller, got to be careful with Mr. Miller at the plate. This kid can hit. He's got some pop. Don't want to leave something up in the zone that he can drive somewhere. Driscoll knows that. That's why he's pitching carefully. And here's the pitch. And he gets the outside corner for a ball. Took a little bit off that one. And Miller can't believe the call. That ball looked a little wide. Hard to see from our vantage point here in the SCSN press box right on top of the dugout over on the first base side of play. So the count one and one, two outs. Runner on second, hot hitting Danny Miller at the plate. Here's the pitch, takes something off that one and over for a strike. Nice pitch by Driscoll, gets the count in his favor now, one and two with two outs. Driscoll probably going to see if he can get Miller to fish for something out of the zone here with the count one and two. Pitch probably going to be low and away. Low and away, almost automatic. Solano pitchers, they got that one-two count. Next pitch going to be low and away. See if you can get the batter fishing for a ball out of the zone. Miller saying nothing doing. I got a pretty good eye myself. Give me something I can hit, kid. Driscoll saying not today. Two-two pitch. Two outs. No score. 
Reyes on second. Here's the pitch, and it's going to be a pop fly, and Crosby's under it. JQ is there. Crosby says, I got it, kid, and gets the third out in the inning. So Driscoll, another little jam after giving up the leadoff runner, a or giving up the leadoff batter, a hit, gets out of the jam again at the end of two and a half innings of play. No score. Getting things started in the bottom of the third for the Falcons. Zachary Wells will be followed by Alex Crosby, who caught that pop-up to get Driscoll out of the jam in the top half of the inning. And then Tucker Bishop. Fimbres on the mound. Third inning of work. Swing and a miss by Zach Wells. Good pitch by Fimbres. Fimbrez is wondering if he's going to get out of an inning without having to snare a line drive. Hit right back to him. He's done that the last two innings to get out of jams. Boy, in the second inning, too, he was cruising. Retired the first two batters, and the next thing you know, base is loaded and line drive back to the box but makes the play. And this one a little bit high, and Wells just throws his bat out, kind of fists it off the handle foul. And so now Wells in a hole, getting things started here for the Falcons in the bottom of the third, down in the count. No balls, two strikes. Wells grounded out to Reyes, his first time up, the second baseman for the Saints. Next pitch by Fimbres in the dirt. And so the count now one and two. Look like Fimbres might be going for the fastball in the outside corner and just overthrew that. Ball actually bounced about six inches in front of home plate. So they count one and two. Wells trying to get something going for the Falcons here in the bottom half of the third. That pitch is fouled right in front of the plate. It might have been off Wells' foot as he's limping over towards the first base side of play. And boy, that's got a sting. Take that baseball off the bat right on the toe. You ever stub your toe before? Now pretend you just kick something. That's what it feels like. Wells, though, tough kid. He's back in there. Give me something I can hit here. And here's a pitch by Fimbres. Takes a little off that one. Wells out in front, swinging a miss. So Fimbres strikes out Wells to start off the bottom of the third, and Alex Crosby coming up to the plate. That's the second strikeout for Fimbres on the afternoon. He's given up one hit. Three walks, though. But Falcons, no score. Saints haven't been able to get a run across either, so no score here in the third. First pitch by Crosby. That's hit right up the middle. Line drive into center field. One out single by the kid out of Will Seawood, Alex Crosby. So now Tucker Bishop comes up to the plate. And you remember back to the first inning when Bishop came up, Jordan Tolbert was on second base and Bishop hit a rocket, but right at the pitcher, Fimbrez stuck out his mitt and snared it. And so now Bishop would like to hit the ball just as hard, but not at someone. One out, runner on first. Fimbrez set, checks the runner, and the pitch. Over for a strike. Good pitch by the freshman out of Oak Grove. Crosby over at first. Decent speed. Actually a pretty decent wide receiver back in his days at Will C. Wood High School. So he can run. That one inside. Gets away from Dana. He's going to throw down and Crosby gets down there just in time. I'm trying to tell you how fast Crosby is. Didn't look that fast getting down there. That ball got away from Dana. Crosby took off and just barely got under the tag by Reyes, the second baseman. But Crosby now in scoring position, standing on second. That will probably go as a wild pitch on Fimbres. And that ball outside for a ball. So the count now, two and one. One out. Crosby on second. Tucker Bishop at the plate. And Nick Spini in the on-deck circle. 
Tucker Bishop, of course. Tucker Bishop, of course, hitting 412 on the season. Great start for the highly touted freshman out of Benicia High School. Here's the next pitch. Fimbres took a little off that one. That one looked right about at the numbers. Must have been a little bit outside. So Fimbres doesn't get the call. Count now three and one. Still not too much wind, just a bit of a breeze out towards left field. Fimbra set, and the pitch, fastball, and it's hit over to the shortstop. Deacon, long throw to first, gets Bishop, and Crosby scampers down to third. So excellent play by the shortstop. Gordon Deacon fields that one cleanly, long throw to first. Retires Tucker Bishop for the second out. And so now Nick Spini comes up to the plate. He grounded out to Reyes his last time up, leading off the second inning. Fimbra set. And the pitch. Spini rips this one into center field. That's going to get Crosby home. So Spini comes up with two outs and gets the run batted in. Nice bit of hitting by the sophomore out of Army O High School. So Crosby comes around to score. And really, that's kind of all set up by that wild pitch. Yeah, put Crosby in scoring position, then allowed him to get down to third on the ground out by Bishop, and now comes home for the first run for the Falcons. Falcons up one to nothing here in the bottom of the third. So now JQ at the plate, and he rips this one, and it's going to get by Deacon out into center field again. So two back-to-back -back singles against Fimbres, and the Falcons have two runners aboard and a run home here in the bottom of the third. So Spini with the RBI single gets a run home. Now he gets over to second on the base hit by JQ. Now coming up to the plate, Matt Mitchell, who with two outs, Really worked himself a nice walk. Down on the count, one and two in the second. Got a walk, eventually ended up stranded at third. Now comes up with two guys on. Pitch by Fimbres, catches the outside corner for a strike. Nice pitch by Fimbres. So Matt Mitchell still two for five on the season, hitting 400 after that walk in the second. And here's a pitch by Fimbres. Good eye by Mitchell. Thought about going around. Ball was a little bit low, a little bit outside. Stayed back on the ball. Good eye by Mitchell. Count one and one. So JQ at first for the Falcons. Spini at second. Fimbres fakes the throw, but nobody there. Spini dives back anyway. Spini last year got off to a pretty good start. Was actually, I believe, number two in the conference and runs batted in and then broke his wrist and out for the season. Here's the pitch, and it's lifted foul, and that's going to be out of play. Over to the first base side of play. And so Matt Mitchell now down in the count. One ball, two strikes. Fimbres probably wondering if he's going to get another line drive back to the box that he's going to have to snare to get out of this inning. All right, so Fimbres ready to go. On the mound, Matt Mitchell got that wide stance at the plate. Big right-hander. And he's set. Here's the pitch. Fimbres takes a little off that one. And a little bit high, a little bit outside. Count now even at two and two. Two outs here in the third. Falcons up one to nothing. And Fimbres started the inning off with a strikeout of one of the best players in Northern California, Zach Wells. But then gave up the base hit to Crosby. Here's the next pitch, and this one is hit by the third baseman. Speedy's going to come home, and the throw is cut off. By Ray Fuentes, holds JQ at second. And so the Falcons have been able to put a couple base hits together here. 
four in the inning total and now have two runs to show for. So as I said before, Fimbres started off by striking out Wells, then gave up the base hit to Crosby. Wild pitch got him to second. Bishop grounded out to the shortstop. That moved the runner over to third, and then a base hit by Spini, JQ, and Matt Mitchell. Two runs on the board, and now David Fernandez steps in. He'd like to do more damage here. Fimbres set, and the pitch over for a strike. So Spini has an RBI. Matt Mitchell has an RBI for the season. That's Mitchell's second RBI on the season. Fernandez said, here comes the pitch, swing and a miss. So the count now 0-2 to David Fernandez, who had a base hit when he was up in the last inning, bottom of the second. David Fernandez hitting 385 on the season, 5 for 13. Next pitch, inside for a ball. Count now one and two. Fernandez, no runs batted in thus far this season. So Fernandez looking for possibly his first one batted in as a community college baseball player. Here's a pitch by Fimbres, way outside for a ball. Now leaving the count at two balls, two strikes, two outs. Score 2 nothing here on a Tuesday. It's all the twos I can think of. Fimbra is really taking his time out there. Still pitching out of the stretch. JQ goes. Dan has trouble coming up with it, and JQ is going to get down easily. And also, Mitchell able to scamper down to second. So not sure if that was a double steal or JQ was just going, but the end result is Falcons on second and third now with two outs. Full count now. David Fernandez, the shortstop out of Armio. Even a better opportunity now to get his first run batted in. And here's the pitch. Boy, nice pitch outside. Boy, I thought Fernandez was going to go good. Job holding up his swing and takes his bag. So a uh, walk by Fernandez. Bags are full. JQ at third. Matt Mitchell at second. We've got Fernandez at first. And here comes Aaron Brasher. Boy, once again, Brasher with two outs. He's got most of his catching gear on. Now he's got to break it down and get up for the two out at bat. He'd probably like to make it worth his while with a big hit here. Falcons would like that as well. Fimbres wouldn't. He's trying to get out of another jam, and here's the first pitch. Outside for a ball. Chance for the Falcons to really break this game open. And the Saints have been nibbling too, haven't been able to get anyone home. Falcons finally able to break through here in the bottom of the third. Pitch by Fimbres, and it's a little chopper. Over to the third baseman, steps on the bag. Nice play by Fuente. So wasn't sure if that was going to stay fair. It does. Fuente stays with it, touches the bag, and finally gets the Saints out of the inning, but not before they give up two runs. At the end of three innings of play, Falcons take the lead, two to nothing. Chris Gomez will be leading things off for the Saints here in the top of the fourth. He'll be followed by Aaron Lefebvre and Joe Olmos. As the Saints come up here in the top of the fourth, down two runs after the Falcons push two across in the bottom of the third. Nick Driscoll still on the hill in his first actual start of the season. Kind of had a start in that first game against DVC. After that game went 10 innings and they called it because of Dark over at DVC, first pitch a little bit high to Gomez. They played the rest of that game on Saturday here at Solano Community College, and to start the 11th inning, Nick Driscoll, in essence, got the start. Pitch very well in that game, and that pitch way inside. So the count now two and zero. Oh. If Driscoll could just retire the first guy out in the inning, 
he'd be swell in this game. It's really been the leadoff batter that have done most of the damage, but not enough for the Saints to get a run on the board. This one hit back of home plate, way out of play. And so the count, two and one now. Chris Gomez at the plate, number 23, also pretty good pitcher for the Saints. Actually, he's 3-0 on the season in 13 innings pitch. That one way high. Looked like that just got away from Driscoll. So the count now 3-1. and one. And Gomez, 2.08 ERA in those 13 innings pitched. Just two walks, 13 strikeouts. So this kid, a really good pitcher for the Saints as he fouls that one back. And so the count now 3-2. and two. In the very first inning, Eugene Kim got things started with the leadoff double. Joe Olmos with the leadoff hit in the second. And then Renee Ray is with a base hit. And this one, Fernandez can't get to it. That probably is going to be an infield hit. So for the fourth inning in a row, the leadoff runner aboard for the Saints with a hit. So Chris Gomez didn't hit it hard, kind of a dribbler, but it just bounced in front of the second base bag. Fernandez actually, nice dive, got his glove on it, but couldn't field it cleanly. And even if he does, probably not able to get up and make a throw to get Gomez. So Gomez, little infield hit to get things started here for the Saints, down by two runs, and Aaron Lefebvre steps up to the plate and goes around a bunt, fouls that one off. So that will be a strike. Aaron Lefevre came into today's game hitting 294 and flight out to Nick Spini back in the first inning to retire and get the third out in the first. So Gomez at first, Driscoll on the hill for the Falcons, pitching out of the stretch, and Brasher fakes the throw down to Crosby. Gomez back. And so the count, one and one now. Nobody out here in the fourth. Pretty good baseball game thus far. Nick Driscoll pitching for the Falcons and freshman Kyle Fimbres throwing for the Mission Saints. Batter around to Bunt. He's going to hit this one to Driscoll. He's going to field it cleanly, flip to Fros Crosby, and that will be the first out of the inning. So Lefevre does his job. Nice sacrifice Bunt. Moves the runner over. And now Joe Olmos comes up to the plate, number 25. Comes into today's game, hitting 500, just one for two on the season. But now actually two for three with that double in the second. Driscoll set, and the pitch, a little bit high. Peter Dana on deck for the Mission Saints. And now Stover is going to call a timeout, and he's going to walk out and have a little chat with Nick Driscoll. I think maybe he saw something on that last pitch. In fact, a couple of the off-speed pitches look like they're just getting away from Driscoll, and he's losing his command. Those balls floating in a little bit high, and that's probably what Coach Stover is going to talk to Driscoll about. So Nick Driscoll, sophomore, last year pitched for the Falcons. Had a few opportunities. Okay pitcher, but I think the Falcons really expecting a lot out of Nick Driscoll. And talking to Nick Driscoll before the season, he said last year with him, his first year pitching in community college baseball, a lot of it was just the confidence. He's really worked hard in the offseason, a lot more confidence. And it shows he's got a shutout going thus far here in the fourth. And here's the next pitch, and whatever Stover said worked as he fires a fastball right down the heart of the plate, gets a strike count one and one. Joe Almas, the center fielder, at the plate. Almas was caught, caught stealing after he got on board with that base hit. Excuse me, that was a base hit, not a double. I think I mentioned that before by Olmus in the second. That was a base hit. Then he was thrown out by Brasher. Breeze picking up just a little, blowing out towards left field. 
Driscoll set. This one in the dirt. Brasher, good job blocking the plate. Keeps Gomez at second. So Tucker Bisher, Bishop at third. Fernandez at short. JQ at second. Crosby at first. Driscoll pitching and hits this one. It's hit into right field. It's going to be trouble and just foul. Boy, that looked like that might have a chance to land fair, especially with the wind blowing towards left field, but not enough push. That was probably about a foot foul. No chance for Wells to get there. It was just hit too softly. Would have dropped easily. And that would have been interesting to see. I'm not sure if Gomez would have been able to get home from second. And Wells' excellent arm would have been fun to see, though. So the count, two and two. One out here. Driscoll on the mound. Going against Joe Olmos. Olmos just his fourth at bat of the season. He'd like to make it count for something. Chance for the Saints to cut the lead in half. Here's the pitch, and this one is hit into center field, but Tolbert's there. Got a line on it, makes the catch. Gets the ball in. Gomez has to stay at second. Big second out for the Falcons. Almost hit that one hard, but right at number 17, the freshman out of Vacaville, Jordan Tolbert. So now it's up to Peter Dana. Hitting just 176, the catcher. He flied out to center field his last time up in the second. And if Dana does something and gets aboard Ray Fuentes in the on-deck circle. That pitch in the dirt. Brasher, good job, blocks it. Gomez halfway down to third, but has to scamper back. Brasher, outstanding throwing arm. Excellent defensive catcher. Also, and a lot of people don't know this about Aaron Brasher, outstanding high school running back in his days at Vallejo. Here's a pitch by Driscoll. That's outside for a ball, a little bit low as well. So one ball, new strikes, two outs. Driscoll again trying to get out of a little jam. Saints have had base runners every inning. Haven't been able to get them home. Another chance here. Here's the pitch by Driscoll. This one hit foul. Ripped down the third baseline, but foul. Couple feet over to the right. That's trouble for the Falcons. Tucker Bishop, though, he'd like to tell you, I'm on it, I got it. Pretty good third baseman, especially as a freshman. Really like this kid's confidence at third. All right, so the count, two and one, two outs. Driscoll out of the stretch. Checks Gomez at second. And here's a 2-1 pitch. This one popped up in the infield. Driscoll calling for it. Runner in the way. Steps over the bat. Makes the catch. Nice play by the pitcher. So once again, Driscoll, a little bit of a jam, but gets out of it. Houdini working his magic on the mound for the Falcons. And at the end of three and a half innings of play, Falcons up 2-0. Leading off for the Falcons to get things started here in the bottom of the fourth inning, Jordan Tolbert comes up to the plate, had a walk in the first, lined out to the pitcher in the second. Tolbert comes in hitting 1-6-7. And here's the first pitch by Fimbres in the dirt for a ball, a little bit outside as well. Fimbres set, and here's the 1-0 pitch. Fouls that one out of play over there to the Solano dugout. Boy, Solano just coming off of a shellacking at San Mateo on Saturday. Lost that game 17-8. So nice to see the Falcons trying to get things back on the right track today. Leading two to nothing. Is that pitch outside in the dirt for a ball count? Two and one. In that game at San Mateo, Falcons were up after an inning and a half, six to nothing. 
Tolbert kind of flails at that one, comes up empty. Count now two and two. And you'd think with your ace of the staff, Ryan Anderson on the hill, six nothing lead, things are looking pretty good. But Anderson just got rocked in the third inning, gave up 10 runs. And this one is lifted out into shallow center field. That's going to be a base hit for the kid out of Vacaville. And Jordan Tolbert, boy, doing a good job getting the start in center field as the leadoff hitter. He's been on board two out of his three times at the plate. That's exactly what you want from your leadoff hitter. And boy, he was close to getting on in the second. It was just a great play by Fimbres to snag a line drive, hit right back to him. So Zach Wells now at the plate. Wells 0 for 2. Grounded out to second in the first, struck out in the third. That one, Wells going around a bunt, hit his bat, fouled it back, but he was trying to get out of the way of that one. That was high and tight. So that'll be a strike. Tolbert at first. Kind of interested to see what, to what Coach Stover does here, if he maybe sends Tolbert or tries to go with the hit and run. Zach Wells, pretty good contact hitter at the plate. Throw over, Tolbert back. Zach Wells does have six strikeouts on the season and probably why you're seeing him square around a bunt to get the run over. All right, here's the 0-1 pitch. That's low, good eye by Wells. Tolbert back, count one and one. Nobody out, Falcons up two to nothing over the visiting Mission Saints. We come to Billy and Louise Yarborough Stadium this afternoon with a four and one record. Great start for the Saints. Playing the tough Golden Gate Conference. Fimbres set. This was bunted down the first baseline. Easily gets Tolbert and Wells is gonna get by Miller who tries to tag him but can't get there. So nice hustle by Wells. Excellent, well-placed bunt. Miller had to go over and get it and then try to get back and tag Wells, who really runs deceptively well, able just to get by the tag of Miller. And more importantly, now you got Jordan Tolbert with that excellent speed standing at second base. So that's probably gonna be an infield hit for Wells. He'll take it. Tolbert now down at second. And up to the plate comes Alex Crosby, the big left-handed hitter for the Falcons. Struck out his last time up. Grounded out to Ray is into first. And he lays down a bunt. Fimbres goes and gets it. He's going to throw over to first. And that was a good decision by Fimbres. Might have had a chance to go to third, but if you do, it messes everything up. Take the sure out. And Fimbres does so. Crosby does his job and really kind of shows you the effort you're going to get from every Solano Falcon. I don't care if you're the number three hitter and one of the more highly touted players in the Bay Valley Conference, runners on, you're going to lay down the bunt, get those runners in scoring position. So Crosby does his job. Tolbert at third. Wells now at second. And up to the plate, Tucker Bishop. Looking for her, his first hit as well. Fimbers. Pitches this one, ripped into center field. Almost going back. There in time, makes the catch, but hit certainly deep enough for Tolbert to get home easily. That's another run for the Falcons. They now go up three to nothing on the sacrifice fly by Tucker Bishop. So that's an RBI by, Bi by Bishop. Falcons doing a good job of manufacturing runs. Got the first two runners on board. Runners on first and second. Crosby bunts him over, and then Bishop gets the fly, gets home Jordan Tolbert. Falcons up three to nothing, and now Nick Spini at the play. And this one is lifted into shallow right field, but Lefebvre there comes in and makes the catch for the third out, but not before the Falcons add another run to the mix, and at the end, of four innings of play, Falcons up over the Saints, four to nothing. All right, so Ray Fuentes starting things off here in the top of the fifth inning. He'll be followed by Rene Reyes and takes that first pitch and that's it down the left field line foul. Spini over there giving it a look. 
And so Fuentes leading things off, as I just said. It'll be followed by Rene Reyes, the number nine hitter, and then back to the top of the order with Eugene Kim. Fuentes grounded to second baseman Justin Quilleton back in the second inning. Here's a pitch by Driscoll, a little bit low and outside for a ball. So the count now one and one. Here in the fifth inning at Billy and Louise Yarborough Stadium, Falcons up over the visiting Mission Saints, three to nothing. Nick Driscoll on the hill for the Falcons. That pitch over for a strike. Count now one and two. Driscoll's going to see if he can retire the first batter of an inning for the first time here in the fifth. And here's a pitch by Driscoll, a little bit off that one. Low for a ball. So the count now two and two. Boy, and you look at the line score in each of the previous four innings for the Saints. They've had one hit, one runner left on base in each of the previous four innings. Pitch by Driscoll. This one hit foul out of play. Over behind the first base dugout. So the Mission Saints dugout right below. Everybody up on the rail still into this game, chatting it up. Trying to get Fuentes to see if he can get something going here. That one over for a strike. Ring him up strike three called. Nice pitch by Driscoll. So for the first time, Driscoll in the top of the fifth gets the first batter out. So Rene Reyes coming up to the plate. Reyes came into this afternoon's contest hitting 400 on the season. And that'll go up just a bit. Already a base hit in the third. Led that inning off with the base hit. Now up with one out. Trying to get something going for the Saints. Chops this one foul. Edgar Barr over there getting that ball in foul territory. Edgar Barr, another freshman that has seen a lot of playing time for the Falcons. Has been in left field. Speeney, of course, getting the start. But when Speeney is the designated hitter, Probably see Ibarra out in left field. Also a guy that's going to come in and left in the later innings for defensive purposes. Falcons this year, really nice mix of experienced seasoned sophomores and a lot of young, talented freshmen. Trying to get that Bay Valley Conference Championship back after winning it five years in a row. Came in second last year to Laney. That pitch by Driscoll. A little bit outside for a ball. So Eugene Kim at the plate. Ray is standing over at first. One out here. Here's the pitch by Driscoll. And this one's lifted into left field. Speeny going over there. Got a play on it. Makes the catch. Boy, Ray is almost down to second. Has to scamper back to first. Nice play by Speeny in left. And that's not Speeny's natural position. Typically played first base last year. Kind of actually was the starting first baseman last year for the Falcons when Crosby was at third. But then Speeny went down. Crosby moves over to first. Speeny now kind of switching positions, learning how to play the outfield. And that was a pretty nice play on a ball that was hit kind of shallow. Good job judging that one coming in and making a nice catch. So that's the second out. Now Gordon Deacon at the plate. This one hit into right field. Wells isn't going to catch up to that one. Fields it on a hop. Reyes is going to go down to third. Wells gets it in in a hurry and Deacon has to stay at first. So base hit by Deacon. And that's going to move Eugene Kim all the way over to third. So now with two outs, runners on the corners, up comes Danny Miller. So Renee Reyes at third. Gordon Deacon at first. Danny Miller at the plate. Grounded out to first baseman Alex Crosby back in the first. 
And then hit a line drive, or actually a pop-up to Crosby to end the third. So another opportunity for Miller. And this one is popped up. Hit that one off the handles, although that's going to carry and be trouble. But Speedy comes in, makes another nice play. Hat flying off as he runs in. I thought that was going to stay in the infield, but that carries out towards left. Speedy with another put out. And so once again, Driscoll able to get out of a little mini jam at the end of four and a half innings of play. Falcons still up over the visiting Mission Saints, three to nothing. All right, leading things off for the Falcons here in the bottom of the third, Justin Quilleton. He'll be followed by Matt Mitchell and then David Fernandez. All right, Fimbra still at the plate. Nice pitch, catches the outside corner. JQ thought about going around but didn't. Oh, and we've got a new pitcher in. Thanks, Katrina Bumgartner. Number 52 in pitching. We'll get you that info in a second as the next pitch is fouled back out of play. So we got Jack Larson, 6'3", 210-pounder, right-handed pitcher, just a freshman, and I believe this is his first outing in the 2013 campaign. So the freshman out of Lay High School getting a chance on the mound for the Saints. And the next pitch to Quilleton, fouled away. So the count 0-2. JQ leading things off for the Falcons here in the top of the fifth. Struck out in the second, had a base hit in the third. Next pitch by Larson. Boy, coming with the heat that time. Challenges JQ. JQ doesn't miss it by much. Fouls that one straight back. And Larson, boy, you can tell he's a big dude on the mound. Got some velocity. Next pitch, JQ kind of golfs that one foul. So the count's still 0 and 2. How exciting does that have to be? Getting your first chance to pitch in community college baseball. And Larson looks pretty good thus far, although first batter. But he's throwing some heat. That one, whoo, rip foul. Katrina's going, I'm glad that wasn't higher. Would have taken out the camera. Much rather have it take out the camera than you. Way to hang tough up there. All right. So Larson going after JQ. JQ getting his money's worth on his rips. Here's the next pitch, and he hits that one, but the shortstop Deacon stays with it, fields it on a couple hops, long throw to first, and retires the first batter here in the fifth. So 6-3, one out. Matt Mitchell now coming up to the plate. And Jack Larson has recorded his first out. Getting Quilleton to ground out. And here comes Matt Mitchell. A walk and a base hit. Designated hitter for the Falcons. Fastball on the corner for a strike. You can definitely tell a change in the velocity from Fimbres to Larson. That pitch at the knees for a strike. Larson bringing the heat. Larson works quickly too. Quickly ahead of Matt Mitchell. No balls, two strikes. One out, here's the pitch. A little bit high, a little bit outside for a ball. Count one and two. Good 0-2 pitch by Larson. Trying to see if Mitchell will fish for something a little bit out of the zone. Mitchell says nothing doing. Here's the next pitch. Just below the knees for a ball. So good eye by Mitchell. Now Mitchell's looking for something he can drive right here. Count two and two. Larson might come after him with the fastball. That one low for a ball. So Larson quickly up 0-2, and, and now three balls in a row. And we saw Matt Mitchell do that against Fimbres back in the second, down 0-2, and, and ended up getting a two-out walk. Larson ready. Here's the pitch. That's high for a ball, so another walk by Matt Mitchell. 
Boy, you look at Mitchell's on-base percentage. He's been up three times today, on base three times. For the number seven hitter, and now up comes David Fernandez. Fernandez also on base two times. Had a base hit in the second and then walked in the third. So Matt Mitchell at first. Jack Larson on the hill. David Fernandez at the play. That pitch a little bit outside. Throwback. Mitchell gets there, and he is out. Nice throw by Peter Dana. Mitchell strayed just a little bit too far. Boy, it was a bang-bang play. Good job by Miller getting the tag down. And that's a big out for Larson. So two outs now. David Fernandez at the play. Nobody on for the Falcons. Jack Larson, the freshman, on the hill. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss by Fernandez. That pitch, Larson said, here, kid, hit this. Fernandez tried, but came up empty. Count one and one here in the bottom of the fifth. Larson's pitch. And this one is popped up. Out of play, Miller, the first baseman, settles under it, makes the catch. Pretty impressive debut by the freshman, Jack Larson. Three up, excuse me, four up, four down at the end of five and a half innings of play. Falcons up three to nothing. Okay, we're ready to get things started here in the top of the six. Driscoll still on the mound for the Falcons, and the first pitch to Gomez tries to lay down the bunt. And that'll go as a strike. Also, too, just to clear up that last inning, three batters faced by Larson. It was the walk to Mitchell, the number two hitter. He was picked off, so three up, three down in that last inning by Larson. All right, here we go. Count 0 and 1 to Gomez. That pitch a little bit outside. So the count now one and one. Nick Driscoll has been efficient today. Not exceptional, but very efficient. Next pitch, and this one is a pop-up. Fernandez the short on the dirt. Under it, makes the catch for the first out. So two innings in a row now by Driscoll where he's finally retired that leadoff hitter. So Chris Gomez pops up, and now coming up, Aaron Lefevre, Joe Olmos on the on-deck circle. Falcons up three to nothing here on the Solano College Sports Network. Hope you're enjoying today's game. Pitch by Driscoll in the dirt, gets by Brasher. So that'll be a ball. And we really appreciate you checking out our Solano College Sports Network, our YouTube page, and make sure you check out some of the basketball games, both men's and women's games, on the Solano College YouTube channel. All right, so the count one and one, one out. Aaron Lefevre at the plate. Flight out to left field in the first. Sacrifice bunt in the fourth. That one high for a ball, count two and one. So the Falcons going for win number five today. Just be an outstanding start to their season. That one fouled out of play. So that'll even the count at two and two. Yes. Thank you, Katrina. It would be their fourth win. Mission going for their fifth win. Mission, of course, four and one. Falcons, three and one. So Driscoll set, and the pitch takes a little off that one, and Lefebvre way out in front, does get a piece of it, but almost fell down in the process. Good pitch by Driscoll. And the Falcons still a ways to go, but they come away with this game four and one, would be their best start to a season since 2007 when they opened up the 
campaign with five wins in a row. That one swing and a miss. Strike three. Good pitch by Driscoll. So two up, two down for the Saints. And now Joe almost coming up to the plate. Had a base hit back in the second and was retired in the fourth. Falcons typically struggle during non-conference play, and that's because Coach Stover makes sure they always play the top teams in Northern California. And typically for Solano, a good non-conference record, 506-6. Coach Stover usually pleased with that. First pitch, strike. Joe Alma, center fielder, at the play. Falcons last year, I think, were 4-8 and eight in non-conference play to open the season. That pitch, a little bit low. Falcons, of course, last year, their roster dominated by freshmen. Also a lot of injuries in the pitching staff. Still just barely missed their sixth Bay Valley Conference championship in a row, losing the final two games of the regular season to Laney. Here's the next pitch by Driscoll. This one is popped up. Tucker Bishop under it. Fernandez says, I got it, and makes the catch for the third out. So quick inning, three up, three down at the end of five and a half innings of play. Falcons up three to nothing. All right, so Aaron Brasher finally leading off an inning for the Falcons. Thought he would a couple times. Brasher with his catcher gear on with two outs and then still ends up coming to the plate. This time gets to lead off the inning, and he'll face Jack Larson. Larson starts him off with a strike. Brasher walked back in the second and then hit a force out to the third baseman to end the third inning. That one is hit, takes a bad bounce, but the shortstop stays with it. Low throw, but Miller digs it out, and the first out retired for the Falcons. Brasher, a little grounder to the shortstop, Gordon Deacon. And now coming up to the plate, Jordan Tolbert. He'll be followed by Zach Wells. Jordan Tolbert. Tolbert thus far, excellent job in the leadoff position for the Falcons. He's been on base two or three times and scored a run. Larson starts him off with the fast ball. We'll see if he goes around. Call down to the first base up, and he does. So Tolbert couldn't lay off that. Fastball, a little bit outside. So the count, 0-1. Here comes Larson with the next pitch, and it's hit sharply right by the diving shortstop, Gordon Deacon, and Tolbert is on with his second hit of the game. So two base hits in a row for Jordan Tolbert, and Coach Stover has got to like what he's seeing out of number 17, getting the start in center, and the leadoff hitter for the Falcons. So with one out, Tolbert on first, and now Zach Wells coming up to the plate. Wells thus far is one for three. Had a base hit back in the fourth, struck out in the third, grounded out to Ray as the second baseman in the first. So Zach Wells ready to go, steps in, throw over. Tolbert back. Jack Larson on the hill, the big freshman right-hander out of Lay High School, 6'3", 210-pounder. And he's got some velocity. Here's the next pitch. Nice pitch, fastball. Outside corner for a strike. Zach Wells coming in to today's game, hitting 389. 7 for 18. He's got a double, a triple. Two runs batted in. Already a hit in this game. Looking for another. Larson set. And the pitch. High for a ball. Dana fakes the throw down to first. Tolbert gets back. Tolbert again. Excellent base runner. Very fast. Bobby Campo, one of the coaches for the Falcons, tells me he's the fastest guy on the team. Really likes his speed. Tolbert, big lead. Here's the pitch. This one is laced into the gap, and there's no way Kim's getting to that. That's going to go to the wall. Tolbert rounds third. Wells is going to stay at second, and here comes Tolbert. He scores 4-0 Falcons. 
So good job by Wells. Just waited for a ball he could drive somewhere, and he hit that one in the gap between Kim and left and almost in center, and that gets a run home. So a double for Zach Wells on the season. I believe that is his second double. That's his third run batted in, and more importantly, the Falcons now up four to nothing. And so head coach Michael Luna, he's going to go out and have a chat with Larson. And not just a chat, that's it, big guy, pretty good job for your first outing. Larson was really solid in the previous inning. But here after retiring Aaron Brasher on a ground out to the shortstop, gives up a base hit to Tolbert and then a big double by Zach Wells. And Tolbert comes home. And so now we'll have a pitching change, and it looks like number 11, that's going to be Steve Miller coming into the game. I don't see his band with him, so it's not that Steve Miller. This kid's out of Santa Teresa, just a freshman. 6'1", 185-pounder, right-hander. He has pitched a little bit thus far this season, 2.2 innings pitched. Two walks, one strikeout, nothing on his record and nothing on the ERA. So as we really get to do a lot in non-conference play, we get to see a lot of pitchers getting in there, getting work for the first time, and we'll get a chance to check out Steve Miller. He'll come in with one out here in the bottom of the six. Already the Saints are down four to nothing. Jordan Tolbert got a base hit with one out, scored on the double by Zach Wells. And once Steve Miller is warmed up, he'll be greeted by Alex Crosby. So the Mission Saints, even though down in this game, they've got to be pretty excited about their start. Michael Luna, the head coach. And again, the Saints started the season 3-0. They beat Las Madonnas, a team that the Falcons, of course, are familiar with. And when you go back to last year's race in the Bay Valley Conference Championship, and Solano not getting the Bay Valley Conference Championship for the sixth year in a row, but also the Falcons did not make it into the playoffs. They had been in the playoffs the previous six years, and one of the reasons why Las Madonnas ended up taking second in the Bay Valley Conference. Solano actually tied with them, but Las Madonnas won the season series, and that gave them the edge. Las Madonnas able to get into the playoffs, Solano home, for the first time in six years. So Las Madonnas, a team the Falcons are familiar with, but the Saints able to sweep them to start the season. Then a big two to one win over American River. Saints able to get home the winning run in the bottom of the ninth, and then they split a series with Merced. They won four to two, lost six to five. Merced, a pretty good team, ranked number six in the nation. So Mission now taking on the number 19 Solano Falcons. And it looks like Steve Miller ready to go. So the right-hander is set. He'll be facing the left-handed hitting Alex Crosby with one out here in the bottom of the six. Zach Wells on second. And the first pitch by Miller. A little bit low for a ball. So Alex Crosby. He's one for two. Grounded out to Reyes in the first. Got a base hit in the third, and then eventually scored on a single by Nick Spini, and then had a sacrifice to move Wells and Tolbert into scoring positions. And that one is hit right to the first base from Miller. He's going to race Crosby to the bag, gets there easily. Wells able to scamper down to third. And so Crosby hits the ball the other way, gets the runner over. Two outs now, and that'll be an unassisted put out by the first baseman, Danny Miller. So Tucker Bishop now at the plate. Had a fly to deep center to get home Tolbert for a run batted in back in the fourth, grounded out to short in the third and lined out to the pitcher in the first. Miller set, first pitch outside for a ball. Tucker Bishop coming into today's game, hitting 412 on the season. Tucker Bishop, Bishop also three runs batted in. Chance for another one here with two outs in the bottom of the six. Zach Wells, 90 feet away at third. Miller takes a little off that one, but doesn't get it over the plate. Count two and up. Oh. 
So Larson started the inning. Miller in, in relief of Larson. Miller able to retire the first batter he faced. Alex Crosby on the ground out to Miller. But needs one more out to get out of this inning. Of course, Larson started off the inning with the ground out by Aaron Brasher to get that first out. At the plate, Tucker Bishop. Here's the pitch outside for a ball. So the count, 3-0. and out. We'll see if Miller tries to go after Bishop or gives up the walk. Wouldn't be the worst thing. A little more opportunity for getting an out. If he does walk, here's the pitch by Miller. And that's going to be inside for a ball. So Tucker Bishop, a four-pitch walk. Zachwell stays at third, obviously. Runners at the corners. And now Nick Spini at the plate. Spini already with an RBI base hit in the third. That's sandwiched around a ground out to the second baseman and a fly ball to right field. Home plate umpire talking to the catcher. Dana for second. Miller back to the mound. Not sure what the conference was about. And now Spini steps in. Nick Spini, left-handed batter. Digs in against Miller. Facing Miller for the first time. Miller the third pitcher for the Saints. Needs an out here. And there's the pitch. Tucker Bishop also down at second now. Big opportunity for the Falcons. Couple more runs here. That one in the dirt. Good job by the catcher. Dana keeps that one in front. Definitely prevented a run there. And we all know about Zach Wells' ability to scamper home from third. We saw it last Thursday. Bottom of the night. Game tied. Zach Wells comes home on a wild pitch. Just barely gets under the tag of the catcher Trowbridge for San Mateo. Falcons won that game. This one, a little dribbler by Spinney. It goes to the pitcher. Miller fields it. He'll throw to first high, but Miller able to secure it and get the third out in the inning. So the Falcons able to get another run. They go up four to nothing, and at the end of six innings of play, that's the score we have, four to nothing in favor of the Falcons. All right, we're all set to go. Top of the seventh inning, Peter Dana getting things started for the Saints. Down by four runs. It'll be followed by Ray Fuentes and Rene Reyes. First pitch by Driscoll popped up. Fernandez settles under it and makes the catch. That's the third pop up to Fernandez in the last two innings. So Fernandez has been busy over at shortstop. Good job by Driscoll, too. Players are just hitting under the ball, popping it up. And Ray Fuentes now at the plate, struck out in the fifth, grounded out to second in the second. First pitch over for a strike by Driscoll. Do you have a little activity by the Falcons down in their bullpen? That might be Drew Lamont getting loose in case Driscoll gets into a jam here. That next pitch low for a ball. So the count one and one, one out here. Four to nothing Falcons here on the Solano College Sports Network. I'm Greg Poff, along with my camera person, Katrina Bumgartner, skeleton crew today, but bringing you still all the Solano baseball action. That pitch low for a ball. Count now two and one. Falcon starting lineup still intact defensively. That pitch high for a ball. So the count two and one. Crosby at first. JQ at second. Fernandez at short. You got Tucker Bishop at third. Driscoll and Brasher the battery. Spini in left. That pitch high, so that'll be a walk. And I'm kind of looking out to left. That looks like it might be Anthony Pickett out there in left field. Can't quite see with my old eyes, but 
If that's number 25, Anthony Pickett out in left field. And so that's a walk. Fuentes on first. That might be it for Driscoll as Coach Stover goes out to have a chat with the sophomore righty. Yeah, Drew Lamont, number 24, warming up in the bullpen, and Stover probably just taking a little bit more time letting his relief pitcher get loose, and Driscoll's going to pitch to another batter, and that's going to be Renee Reyes, who had a base hit in the third, and then was aboard, I believe, catcher's interference back in the fifth. Again with our skeleton crew, sometimes we miss a few things, call in one play and then see something else. No doubt about, oh actually, <laughs> I thought Driscoll hit him that time, but does it? I was just talking about those old eyes. Don't fail me yet. So one ball, no strikes to Reyes. This one is hit into left field and it's down the line just foul. Oh my goodness, that would have been big problems for the Falcons if that lands fair. Anthony Pickett, I don't think, is going to get there in time to make a play. And with the runner on first, and we saw this in the San Mateo game, you get a game down in left field, or a hit down in left field, it gets under that batting cage, it can be tough to handle. But just a harmless foul ball. Count one and one, one out here. Falcons hanging on to that 4 nothing lead. The Saints have had their opportunities. They've had runners aboard in every inning but the last. Just have not been able to capitalize. Here's a pitch by Driscoll. A little bit high for a ball. So the count now 2 and 1. Driscoll. And here's a 2-1 pitch, and this one is lifted into center field. Tolbert over there quickly cuts it off, but misses a cutoff man, Fernandez. Bishop backing him up, so backing him up. So base hit, two in a row. Or actually a walk and a base hit. Runners on first and second. And now we go to the top of the order with Eugene Kim, the left fielder, coming up. Kim opened up the game with a double and had a sacrifice in the third, that first pitch. A little bit outside for a ball, and then he flied out to left field in the fifth. So opportunity for Eugene Kim here with one out. Driscoll out of the stretch and the pitch and this one is lifted into right. Zach Wells there. He's going to park under it. Let's see if the runner goes and he fakes going. Sees the great throw by Wells. Wells excellent throwing arm. Good decision by number 12 Fuentes to get back to second. So that's a big out for Driscoll. That's the second out in the inning. The runners have to hold. So Reyes remains at first. Fuentes stays at second. Now with two outs, Gordon Deacon, the shortstop, comes up to the plate. Had a base hit his last time up in the fifth. Hit a line drive to Crosby in the third. And that hit, then hit a sacrifice fly to Zach Wells in the first. So Deacon, one for one in the box score. Really wants to keep this rally going. Saints down by four. We're in the top of the seventh. Driscoll's been going the whole way for the Falcons. Another jam he's got to work his way out of. And this is a grounder. It's to Fernandez. Grabs it. Steps on the bag. And that will do it. So Driscoll again in a bit of trouble. But able to work his magic and get out of the inning unscathed. And so at the end of six and a half innings to pl of play, it's time to stretch, folks. Seventh inning stretch. With the score, Falcons up over the visiting Mission Saints, four to nothing. All right, well, we are ready to get things underway here in the bottom of the seventh with the Falcons on top, four to nothing, and leading things off for the Falcons, Justin Quilleton, the second baseman, comes into today's game hitting 333 and is one for three in today's game. Miller still on the mound for the Saints, first pitch outside for a ball. 
So Kyle Fimbres started the game for the Saints. Went four innings. Big Jack Larson came in in the fifth and the sixth, and then Miller came in to relieve Larson in the sixth inning. And that pitch hits JQ. He's going to take a bag. And so the first batter on board for the Falcons already up four to nothing. And so now Matt Mitchell, the DH, he's going to come up to the plate again. And Matt Mitchell has been on base every time he's been up in this game. Had a walk in the second. Base hit. And an RBI single in the third. And then walked in the fifth. Was picked off first after that walk. And so now an opportunity for Matt Mitchell again. JQ on first for the Falcons. And Mitchell already with an RBI in this game. Steps in to face Miller for the first time. He's already around a bunt. Here comes the pitch. And Miller kind of threw that one low. And Mitchell was set so low like he was trying to get the ball under the bat. So ball one. JQ peers in. Three-year redshirt sophomore and lays that one down. It's a beauty of a bunt right down the first base bag. Miller gets this one and over in time to tag out Quilleton, but Quilleton does his job and moves the runner over to second base. And that was Matt Mitchell. My mistake on the bunt. JQ, of course, getting down to second. So sack bunt for Mr. Mitchell. And now coming up, David Fernandez. David Fernandez has been busy at shortstop, especially in the last couple innings. Several pop flies, and he's played excellent defensive shortstop today. Also not bad at the plate. He's got a hit, a walk, and he popped up to the third baseman, Miller, in the fifth. So Fernandez, one for two today. And, of course, comes in hitting 385 on the season. So Miller on the mound for mission. JQ on second, dances off the bag. Dan, a good job keeping that low pitch in front of him as Fernandez takes the ball from Miller. Mission players in the dugout really shouting out words of encouragement, really trying to spur on young Miller on the hill. Miller just a freshman out of Santa Teresa. Here's the pitch by Miller. That one low again. Miller comes into today's game. Only 2.2 innings pitched thus far in the season. Couple walks. Does have a strikeout. And did a nice job retiring Nick Spini in the last inning to get out of a jam after the Falcons had already scored a run in that inning. So Fernandez ready. Pitch by Miller. Outside corner for a strike. Nice pitch by Miller. Miller has an interesting throwing motion. Kind of whips the ball around as he comes through. Miller shakes off the first sign from Dana. Likes the second one. Gives his catcher the nod. Checks the runner. Pitching out of the stretch. Checks him again. Throw over. Doesn't throw. Fake. JQ back easy. Ray is over there guarding the bag in case there is a throw. And now Fernandez steps in again. Big spot for the Falcons here. They'd like some insurance. Here's the pitch by Miller. That one in the dirt again. So Miller really keeping his pitches low. But hurting his control a bit. Count now three and one. Already hit a batter. Hit Justin Quilleton to start the inning. Then able to get Matt Mitchell out on the sacrifice bunt. Quilleton, decent lead. Miller checks him. And the pitch, low again. So Miller really having trouble finding the strike zone. And those pitches aren't missing by much. Just at the knees, below the knees. Not getting the call. 
So Fernandez, another walk. That's his second one in today's game. JQ, Justin Quilleton, out of Hogan High School, at second. Fernandez, of course, played his ball at Armio. And now here comes Aaron Brasher. Brasher digs in from the right side. Facing Miller. Here's the pitch. Fastball over for a strike. Strike one. Good pitch by Miller. Looked like Brasher might have been taking that one all the way. Just one out. So a ground ball would be ideal for the Saints. Give him a chance to possibly get out of this without giving up another run. Only six outs left for the Saints. They don't want to let this lead grow anymore. Here's a pitch by Miller. That one in the dirt. Good job by Dana. Dana, excellent job blocking the ball, keeping it in front. Certainly don't want to let JQ get down to third base with only one out. Both catchers, excellent job defensively today. So big spot for the freshman out of Santa Teresa. 6'1", 185-pounder. Here's the pitch. Brasher pops this one up. This is exactly what the doctor ordered for the Saints. Miller under it and gets that all important out number two. So Brasher really struggling at the plate for the 2013 campaign so far. Did have a walk in the first, but hit into a force out in the third, grounded out weakly to short in the sixth. And now pops up to Danny Miller over at first for the second out in this inning. Jordan Tolbert now comes up to the plate. Runners on first and second, still two outs here. Falcons up four to nothing. Tolbert, solid game today. Getting the start in center and the leadoff hitter for the Falcons. Miller checks the runners and the throw. Tolbert bounces it, bunts it, pops it up right in front of Dana, secures it, and that'll do it for the seventh inning for the Falcons. So at the end of seven innings of play, Falcons knocking on the door but can't get another run home. Falcons still up four to nothing. So new pitcher in for the Falcons as we get things started here in the top of the eighth inning, Drew Lamont on the hill for the Falcons. Drew Lamont, just a freshman out of Berean Christian. And he'll start things off facing Danny Miller. He'll be followed by Chris Gomez, and then Aaron Lefevre. First pitch by Lamont over for a strike. So Drew Lamont, 6'4", 195, right-handed pitcher. As I said, just a freshman. So the tall, lanky right-hander, opportunity to shut things down here for the Falcons. That next pitch, a little bit low. And we may see Drew Lamont here in the eighth inning, and we'll see if... We get to see Nick Altman, Altman come in and close the game in the ninth. Coach Stover might be content, depending on how Lamont pitches, to go with him for the next two innings. That one is ripped by Miller, and Jordan going back and makes the play. Nice play by Tolbert. Danny Miller gave that one a ride, and boy, we saw this on Saturday. It seemed like three or four times fly balls hit over the head of the center fielder, Gio Torres. Jordan Tolbert, excellent speed. Nice jump on that ball. Miller gave it a ride, but Tolbert there to make the catch and made it look pretty easy. So long fly ball by Miller. Out to center fielder Jordan Tolbert. That's the first out of the inning. And now up to the plate, Chris Gomez. Lamont starts him off with a pitch that's a little bit inside for a ball. Count 1-0. Chris Gomez has a walk, a base hit, and popped up to the shortstop. So one for two in this game. That pitch over for a strike. Count one and one. And Lamont set. This one swing and a miss. Strike two. Lamont first came in and pitched for the Falcons in that very first game at DVC came in in relief of Anthony Pozzola. Pitched pretty well in that game, couple innings. That pitch is by the pitcher, but JQ there behind the bag and boots it. And so that's going to be an E4. And Chris Gomez on base for the Mission Saints here in the eighth inning, down by four. 
Falcons have played really well defensively today. I believe that's the first air in the game. And that's going to be against Justin Quilleton. So Gomez now on first. It'll be the third time that he's been aboard today. And now Aaron Lefebvre comes up to the plate. Lefebvre struck out in the sixth. Had a sacrifice bunt in the fourth. And a fly to left fielder Spini way back in the first inning. Lamont set. That pitch a little bit outside for a ball. Game now, just about two hours and 15 minutes long. Still nice afternoon. Here's the chopper hit to Fernandez. Gets it on the hop, drops it, stays with it. Good decision, doesn't try to make the throw. I think if he tries to make that, couldn't throw it away. Better to eat that one, but that'll go as an E6. So Drew Lamont comes in, has to be wondering what's going on. I should be out of this inning. Gets the first batter who hits a deep fly ball to Tolbert. He makes a really good play on a hard hit ball, but then a routine grounder to JQ. He bobbles that one. This last one, this was a tough one hopper for, for Fernandez, but if he fields it cleanly, he makes that play easily. So now runners on first and second. Up at the plate, Joe Olmos. First pitch low for a ball. That's... All right. Joe Olmos had a base hit in the second. Was out in the fourth. Flight out. Or actually a pop-up to Fernandez in the sixth. That pitch is low. That's going to be ball two. So things getting a little tougher for Drew Lamont here. Only one out. Mission down by four. The eighth inning. Here's a pitch by Lamont. Yeah. Fastball outside for a ball. Lamont just reared back and threw that one, but didn't get it over the strike zone. So 3-0, Lamont one pitch away from loading the bags with just one out. Not much of a lead by the runners. This pitch, ball four. So four pitch walk by Lamont. After the two airs, one by JQ, one by Fernandez at short. Bags are full. Game tighten it up a little bit. Coach Stover, he's gonna go out and talk to his players about it. So a little huddle at the mound. Big opportunity for the Saints to get back in this one. So the meeting of the minds over. Coach Stover has given his players instructions. And now Drew Lamont will face Peter Dana, the catcher. Big spot here. One out. First pitch over first strike. Bases full. Lamont would love a ground ball somewhere. That would be exactly what the doctor ordered. He's got to make the pitches though. And the next pitch, it's hit sharply to Fernandez. Gloves it over to second, not in, t not in time, and the run scores. So base hit, but it was hit deep in the hole. Fernandez had to go towards third base to glove it. By the time he was able to secure it, set his feet, and throw over to second, not in time to get the runner. And so the Mission, Mission Saints push a run across. Chris Gomez scores. Bag still full. And so that's going to be probably an infield hit for Peter Dana. Now you have Lefevre over at third, almost at second. Peter Dana at first, still one out. Falcons now up four to one and up to the plate. And it looks like we've got a pinch hitter, number nine coming up. That's going to be Joe Davis. And Joe Davis typically starts at third base, but got the day off today. Fuente's got the start at third. But Joe Davis steps in, comes into the game, hitting 150 on the season. Here's a pitch by Lamont. And that's a ball, low and outside. Joe Davis, a sophomore out of Aptos High School. Here's the next pitch, low and outside for a ball. Put out. Oh, 
So this inning began with a long fly ball, two airs, a walk, and a base hit. Mission has their first run, and that one rip but foul. Kind of lost that ball the first, heard it was hit hard, and then looked up to see it bouncing off the screen just past third base. Here we go, Joe. Oh, baby, with Joe. With Joe. Let's go. Joe Davis, 6'2", 190 pounder, and swinging a miss on that next one. Actually fouled it back. So the count now two and two with one out here. Again, Lamont would love a ground ball. Hit hardly at one of hit hard at one of his infielders. Lamont said, here's the pitch, and it's ripped, hits the bag. Fernandez has it, makes a throw to first, and pulls Crosby off the bag. One run in, here comes another one, and two runs come across. And now you got runners at second and third. So Lefebvre is able to score, almost is able to score. And that was a tough chance for Fernandez. He was able to get it, but then trying to make that throw a little bit too low, Crosby couldn't dig it out. And so Peter Dana goes all the way down to third. That's going to be an E6. And now Joe Davis is at second. So now you have the tying run 90 feet away here in the top of the eighth inning. Everything going bad for the Falcons. All these runs unearned after the two airs earlier in the inning. So Falcons opening the door for the Saints. Saints are marching through it. That pitch outside for a ball. So two base air by Fernandez. That was a tough chance. That one high for a ball. Nick Altman warming up for the Falcons. They were hoping to save him for the ninth inning, but he may have to come in and close things down here, at least try to, because the Saints are one run away from tying this game up. Here's the next pitch by Lamont over for a strike. So the count two and one. Still just one out here in the top of the eighth. Three runs already across for the Saints. And runners on second and third, but just one out. Here's that next pitch. This one popped right over my head, just behind the broadcast booth here at Billy and Louise Yarborough Stadium. Kind of a lazy game here for a while. Now in the eighth, folks, we got a ball game. Saints back in it. Trying to tie it up or take the lead. Lamont trying to shut things down. Here's the next pitch. And it's hit to JQ. He's got it. He'll get the out at first. So two outs, but the tying run comes home. Peter Dana scores it. And we're all tied up at four apiece. So Renee Reyes on the ground out to Justin Quilleton. That's the second out in the inning. Now Joe Davis, who pinch hit for Ray Fuentes. Real close to grounding out into a double play, but ended up in an air. Three airs in the inning. Four runs across for the Saints, and we're all tied up. All right, so Eugene Kim at the plate. Takes the first pitch over for a strike. So the Saints, four runs across here in the top of the eight. Saints chatting it up a little bit more. Got some life in the dugout. Next pitch, outside corner for a strike. Saints didn't like it, but that's a call. 0-2. So Lamont now one pitch away from potentially getting out of this inning. And again, the Falcons started off retiring Danny Miller and then two airs and the bottom dropped out. Next pitch at the knees, but outside. Count now two and two. Two outs here. Actually, that's going to be one ball. Count one and two. All right, big pitch by Lamont. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Strike three, big pitch by Lamont. So gets out of the inning, but not before 
giving up four unearned runs to the Saints. They tie this thing up at the end of seven and a half innings of play. Now we're all tied up at four apiece. All right, we're set to go here. New game, all tied at four apiece. Zach Wells getting things started for the Falcons here in the bottom of the eighth. And we've got a new pitcher in, Richie Martinez, now the fourth pitcher. Sophomore out of live oak and starts Wells off with a strike. All right, here's the next pitch, high for a ball. So Richie Martinez, six footer, 170 pounder, right-handed pitcher. 4.50 earned run average in two innings of work. No walks, three strikeouts so far in the 2013 season. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Wells. Takes a little off that one. Looked like a pretty good pitch. Just misses for a ball. Good eye by Wells. Count now 2-1. So the drama picking up here at Billy and Louise Yarborough Stadium and the next pitch and Wells gives it a ride. High fly ball into center field, almost is there, settles under it and makes the catch for the first out here in the bottom of the eighth. So now coming up to the plate, Alex Crosby for the Falcons. He'll face Richie Martinez for the first time today. Crosby on the afternoon has one hit, sacrifice bunt, and is grounded out two times. So Crosby trying to get things going for the Falcons, comes into today's game hitting 286 on the season. Here's a first pitch by Martinez in the dirt for a ball. Richie Martinez, not too big, listed at six foot. I'm going to say maybe 5'10", 170 pounder. Here's the next pitch. A little bit high for a ball. Nice velocity, but a little bit out of the zone, so the count 2-0 to Alex Crosby. Martinez pitching out of the stretch. Here's the pitch. Crosby gives this one a ride. That's hit to deep right field, and it's got a chance off the wall. The right fielder picks it up. Lefevre throws it in, but Crosby standing on second with a stand-up double. Boy, Crosby gave that one a ride. I thought it might have a chance, but no wind at all. Wind has really settled down. Boy, if he would have hit this Saturday in that game against San Mateo, San Mateo, that would have sailed out of the yard. But this one hangs up, hits the fence. Miller, excellent job getting back there to play it off the fence, gets it in and holds Crosby to a big double. So now Tucker Bishop, the freshman, big opportunity for the kid out of Benicia here. Falcon Saints all tied up for a piece. Tucker Bishop lined out to the pitcher. Fimbres way back in the first. Grounded out to the shortstop in the third. Had a long fly ball to center in the fourth. That one got a run home for an RBI, and that had a walk in the sixth inning. So meeting on the mound for the Saints, and they're just kind of setting things up so they know exactly how they want to play every situation that possibly could come up. So Michael Luna, the head coach, has his guys ready to go. And Richie Martinez on the hill. Trying to get the Saints into the ninth with the score tour, tied at 4-4. Four, four. Tucker Bishop, he'd like to do something about that. Crosby, lead at second. Martinez takes a little off that one. Just misses. Looked like a pretty good pitch to me. Doesn't get the call. Count one and oh. If the Falcons somehow could get the leading run across, Nick Altman warming up in the bullpen. Next pitch by Martinez. Over for a strike. Good pitch. Falcons traditionally have been a very good team over the years, answering back when a team scores in the previous inning. They'll get that run back. That pitch outside corner for a strike. Good pitch by Martinez. 
Now he's got the count in his favor. One ball, two strikes. Big opportunity for Tucker Bishop here. Kid full of confidence, hitting 412. Here's the pitch. Takes a little off that one, and it's a shallow pop up. The shortstop Deacon out, calls it, makes a catch for the second out. Good pitch by Martinez. Bishop under that one. Harmless pop up to the shortstop for the second out. So now Giovanni Torres coming up to the plate, and I'm going to guess that it was Giovanni Torres who took the place of Nick Spini back in the sixth out in left field. Couldn't quite see the number. Thought it might have been Anthony Pickett. So Gio Torres, big situation for the freshman at a Fairfield High School. Gio Torres, the younger brother of Christian Torres. Played for the Falcons back in 2010, and I always remember Christian Torres getting thrown out at home plate to end the season for the Falcons in 2010 in that round one playoff, that best of three against DVC. Falcons trying to tie that thing up in the bottom of the ninth. Christian Torres thrown out at home to end the season. Little bro Gio now on the team. And he's got a chance to make a name for himself for the Falcons here. A hit here would be huge for the Falcons with Alex Crosby who runs pretty well at second base. All right, we've got a new pitcher in number 10. I believe that's going to be the fifth pitcher. And wouldn't you know it, in to try to get this all important out against Solano is the pitcher named Solano. Brett Solano in for the Mission Saints. And he's got to get a big out against the team with his namesake, the Solano Falcons. So Brett Solano taking his warm up pitches. Brett Solano, he's a freshman at a Westmont High School. Right handed pitcher, 6'1, 170 pounder. Earned run average thus far this season, 14.54, 0-1. He's only pitched 4.1 innings, two walks, five strikeouts. But in those 4.1 innings of work, he's given up seven earned runs. So Solano, big opportunity to get that ERA whittled down. But he's going to need a big out here. And he's going to need it against Gio Torres, who at least was the batter announced. And there you see the camera work of Katrina Bumgartner trying to show you all the action. And I'll tell you what, folks, it is challenging doing a baseball game with just one camera. But if we keep getting the views for our baseball games on YouTube, we'll be able to hopefully get some money, get another camera, and then start doing baseball like it should be done with multiple cameras. But still, one camera enough to give you the action today and it's been a dandy of a game. We're in the bottom of the eighth. All tied up at four apiece. Falcons with the chance here. Leading run on second in the person of Alex Crosby. Brett Solano, new pitcher on the hill. And up to face him, Gio Torres, the freshman out of Fairfield. Here's the pitch by Solano. Outside part of the plate for a strike. Good pitch by Solano. So Gio Torres out in left field in place of Nick Spini. Had a big single and an RBI earlier. Now it's up to Torres to see if he can do the same. Here's the next pitch. It's a ground ball. Gets by the third baseman into left field. Might have a play at the plate. Here comes the throw, but it's cut off by Deacon. Crosby slides in with the leading run. So Gio Torres comes in. Big base hit for the freshman out of Fairfield. And the Falcons get the lead. Now up 5-4. to four. And I mentioned it at the start. Falcons throughout their history have always been good at answering back. They do so, and now they take the lead 5-4. to four. Gio Torres, big hit by the freshman, standing over at first. Crosby home with the fifth run for the Falcons. And now Justin Quilleton stands in to face Brett Solano. Throw over by Solano. Torres back easily. Torres really runs well. 
Not as fast as Tolbert, but he's got pretty good speed. So Solano still needs an out to get out of this inning. Throw over again. Torres back. Nice work by a camera person. That's a challenge. Going from the battery over to first. Seeing all the action here on the Solano College Sports Network. Good game for you this afternoon. Solano set. And here's the pitch. Takes a little off that one. Nice pitch over for a strike. Count 0-1. Justin Quilleton at the plate. Been at Solano for three years. Red-shirted his first year. Would have saw him his first year. Head hair down to the middle of his back. Throw over. Last year, after red-shirting, played a lot at second, a lot at third base. A lot of action for the freshman. Now he's one of those seasoned sophomore veterans that you'd like to see come up with a big hit here. Throw over by Solano. Close, but Torres still back in time. Quilleton has been clutched thus far this year. It was his home run in the top of the 20th that allowed Solano to win their first game against DVC, 6-4. Here's the next pitch. Takes a little off that one. Quilleton out in front, fouls it off. Count 0-2. Oh two. two outs. Looking down in the bullpen, trying to see if that's Nick Altman still. And it is. Solano set. And the pitch. A little bit outside. Oh. The Saints in the dugout below me thought that was a good pitch. I think I'd have to agree. But Solano doesn't get the call. Count one and two. Tough take by JQ with the count 0-2. Oh Throw over. Torres back. Solano really paying a lot of attention to Torres over at first. All right, Solano ready. And there goes Torres. They could have had him picked off, but would have been a balk probably. Doesn't matter. JQ down swinging, but the Falcons able to push another run across in the bottom of the eighth. We head into the top of the ninth. Here comes Nick Altman, one of the top closers in the Bay Valley Conference. He'll have to hold the lead as the Falcons lead over mission five to four. Nick Altman in to see if he can finish this thing off for the Falcons. Nick Altman, of course, sensational high school pitcher in his days at Benicia. He's been fighting injuries ever since, but he's healthy now. and. Gets that first pitch over. That's actually fouled off, so up at the plate. Number nine, Joe Davis, or excuse me, number six, Gordon Deacon. Looking so much at the stats at Altman, needed to look up and see who's facing him. All right, here's the next pitch, a little bit high by Nick Altman there. And so Gordon Deacon at the plate, he'll be followed by Danny Miller and then Chris Gomez. So the count one and one. Hoping Nick Altman can close this thing out. I got to get to my night class tonight. Next pitch, and it's a line drive into left field. Just past the third baseman, Tucker Bishop. So Nick Altman went after him, but nice bit of hitting by Gordon Deacon. Laces that one into left field. So the leadoff runner on board. More importantly, the tying run on board for the Mission Saints. So Danny Miller now. At the plate, and Danny Miller has got some pop. Hitting 312. Three doubles, three RBIs already, throw over. But the runner back easily. Chris Gomez on deck. Altman set, and the pitch. It's a bunt, and let's see if it stays fair. It just goes foul. Altman was watching it. Nice patience there. And about halfway up the first baseline finally rolled foul for the Falcons. So Deacon trots back to first and Miller will make his way back to the plate. Count 0-1. 
game now close to three hours long. Shadow starting to take effect, but still not over home plate. And Nick Altman on the hill, facing Danny Miller, throw over. Runner gets back easily. Miller looking for his first hit, 0 for 4. And he's around a bunt, runner goes, and that's outside for a ball. Count one and one. So the runner took off, then went back to first. And head coach Luna really keeping the Falcons off balance. Is he going to sacrifice, hit and run? Now going for the sacrifice. Pulls the bat back, runner back. Count now two and one. Nick Altman, senior year in 2010 at Benicia. He was 8 and 2, 1.94 earn run average. Throw over. Not in time, had 70 strikeouts to 12 walks. And Altman actually went to UC Davis, was going to pitch there, and was injured, never really got going his freshman year, came to Solano last year, uh, but was hurt all year. Finally, healthy again on the mound for the Falcons. This kid can pitch when he's healthy. And he's got a chance to prove it right now. Big opportunity for the Falcons. Trying to get their fourth win on the season against only one defeat. Would be their best start since 2007. That one a bunt right to the pitcher, Altman. And he's going to flip it to first. Kind of a low throw, but Crosby catches it easily. Miller does his job, though. Gets the sack bunt down to Altman. Altman flips to Crosby. And Gordon Deacon now standing at second with one out. And now Chris Gomez coming up to the plate. Chris Gomez scored a run in the last inning. He was on aboard that air by Justin Quilleton. Flied out, or actually popped up to Fernandez in the sixth. Had a base hit in the fourth and a walk in the first. So the Saints down to their final two outs. But they have the tying run in scoring position in the person of Gordon Deacon standing at second. Chris Gomez at the plate. Altman checks the runner. Here's the pitch. And it's a little dribbler and it was foul. Hit into foul territory before it bounced out in front of Nick Altman, the pitcher, over to the first base side of the mound. Still hardly a breeze here at Billy and Louise Yarbrough Stadium on the campus of Solano Community College. Just a wonderful Tuesday afternoon and a pretty good baseball game to go with it. Altman ready, and here's the pitch. Catches the outside corner for a strike. Count 0-2. So Altman has got Gomez where he wants him. Pitchers count. 0-2. Here's the pitch by Altman. Low and away for a ball. Gomez not fishing there. Good eye. Chris Gomez, a sophomore. Played his ball at Oak Grove High School. And here's the next pitch. And goes out, gets that one. Brasher's got it. Looks the runner back at second. Throws to first. Gets the second out. Nice play by Brasher. And that's why Brasher is back there. He is such an outstanding defensive catcher. Excellent job there. Went for the tag, couldn't get it, didn't panic. Looked the runner back, Deacon to second, and then makes the throw to Crosby. All important, out number two. Altman and the Falcons need one more. So now you got Aaron Lefevre standing in, facing Nick Altman. And there's going to be a timeout. Coach Stover having a little conversation with the home plate umpire. And so Aaron Lefebvre hitting 294 coming into today's game. Five for 17. He's got a jack already this season and four runs batted in. Big dude as well. 6'3", 215 pounder. Sophomore out of Pioneer High School. 
So you've got a guy with a lot of experience here at the plate. Last chance for the Saints. Altman on the hill. Peers in. Gets the sign. Checks the runner at second. Checks him again. And here's the pitch. Fastball over for a strike. Count 0 and 1. Infield deep. Bishop at third. Fernandez. Bird dog in behind Deacon. Over towards the second base back. JQ at second. Crosby at first. Here's the pitch by Altman. Takes a little off that one. High for a ball. Count one and one. Altman gets this out. I'm going to make it to my night class tonight. But if not, who cares? I'd rather be watching baseball. Next pitch. Low and away for a ball. Count now two and one. Boy, we've had some exciting games for the Falcons thus far this season. When you start off that first game of the season with a 20-inning victory, pretty exciting start to the season. Falcons always make it interesting. Here's a pitch by Altman. And this one fouled back. That'll even things at two and two. Two outs. Falcons really want to win. Get the taste out of their mouths, out of that shellacking they took at San Mateo on Saturday. Lost that 17 to eight. Gave up a six nothing lead with Ryan Anderson on the hill. This will make all that better. Altman. Taking his time. Steps off the rubber. Time is called. Things getting tense here at Billy and Louise Yarborough Stadium. That's how we like it on the Solano College Sports Network. Got to stay on YouTube through all nine innings. And here's a pitch by Altman. Takes a little off that one. Low. Good eye by Lefevre. Boy, that's a hard one to take with the game on the line, but he does, and he's right. Full count. Three and two. Walk here, not the worst thing, especially with two outs. In case you're wondering, Joe Olmos on deck. Here's the three-two payoff pitch. Swing, and it's a foul. Brasher almost had it. Lefebvre swung into Brasher's mitt, could not hang on to it. If he does, ball game over. Saints, close to being done, but there's still life. One more chance for the Saints. Count remains at three and two. Boy, Brasher wanted that ball. He was grabbing all over for it, just couldn't quite secure it. Wish we had replays, but we don't. We get that second camera. We'll have some replays for you. All right, here we go. Here's a pitch by Altman. At the knees, ring him up, strike three, called. Nick Altman comes in. Big pitch, boy, tough pitch by Lefevre to take. Gets it at the knees, and the Saints, after valiantly fighting back to knock this thing at four apiece in the eighth, the Falcons able to push a run across in the bottom half of the eighth inning, and Nick Altman comes in, made it interesting, but ends up picking up the save. So, after nine innings of play here at Billy and Louise Yarborough State Stadium, actually eight and a half, the Falcons go to five, excuse me, four and one on the season. The Mission Saints, on the other hand, drop to four and two on the season. Well, folks, we got to cut this one short, but stay tuned. We're going to end our broadcast with a special interview, and we're going to bring in Nick Altman, have a chance to see what he has to say about the Falcon season. For Katrina Bumgartner, Excellent work on the camera today. I'm Greg Poff here at Billy and Louise Yarborough Stadium. Thanks so much for spending your time with us watching the Solano College Sports Network as the Falcons win a squeaker against the Mission Saints 5-4. to four. Yo, what's good? You are checking out Solano College Sports Network special. Got a very special guest here today. Thanks for having me. Solano Falcons closer, Nick Altman. How's it going, man? Oh, it's, it's awesome. Sunny outside. The weather's finally nice. I think we hit 60 degrees today, so That's it's crazy. a good day. Hey, don't, don't jinx it, man. Don't <laughs> jinx it, all right? All right, so I know last year a little bit of a struggle for Solano. The first time they didn't make the playoffs since 2006. What's been the goal during the winter and after last season heading into this season? Coming in this season, we have much more 
uh, experience. And so if we don't want anything less than what we know we can achieve. We've been working really hard and we all want a state championship just like every other college out there. So we're putting in our work in the fall and this winter so we can hopefully go out there and make that happen. And it looks like you're going to be the closer this year. What's mm -hmm. been the biggest thing you've worked on individually getting ready for this season coming up? Closing is definitely a mental, a mental thing when it comes to pitching. So it's all about getting that right mindset, knowing I have three outs out there, that it's my job no matter if we're down by one run, up by one run, that I need to shut the door on the team in the ninth inning. So, you know, the Giants, they're probably your team. Your boy Sergio Romo just won a championship second in three years for the Giants. Who's a closer that you look up to and kind of you want to be just like that guy? Um, I've been, I was a big fan of Brian Wilson. I mean, it's kind of tough. He's leaving the Giants now, but... He might, he might come back. He might still. Yeah, he might. I mean, he, I heard a comment about him saying he'd like to go to the Dodgers, which kind of puts a little bad blood in the water, if you ask me. But I liked his mentality when he came out. Really pumped up, went right after batters, which I think is important as a closer. So I know Stover. Let's just say he doesn't take things lightly. He's a very hard worker. He expects a lot from you guys. What's the, the biggest thing you like about Coach Stover? Uh, Coach Stover definitely makes us work, but the work he puts in to us is definitely more than we can even comprehend. I mean, we all need to be very grateful and thank him for how much work he puts into this team. So coming in, we see Danny Baptista right here, and also Tom Basie helping coach this year. What's it like knowing guys that have had success under Stover at Solano? What is that, what's the mindset like? Because you talk to these guys about getting to the playoffs, winning some playoff games. Mm -hmm. And does that help you guys out a lot getting ready for this year? I definitely think that's a huge advantage for our whole team because they've had that, they've been under Stover, been in our shoes before, and they know if we buy into the system that coach has been teaching for the last 10, 11 years, that we're going to be a successful program, and ultimately that's our goal is to be a successful team on the field. All right, one last question. We're going to have some fun here. The San Francisco 49ers are in the Super Bowl. Give me a Super Bowl prediction, and whoever guesses the score right, SCSN will do whatever you guys want for an inning. We'll give you guys shot outs, <laughs> whatever. If someone guesses the score right, give me your score. Well, I know the Ravens definitely aren't going to win, so... I'd say. Hey, they've been playing pretty well. They just beat Tom Brady at home. First yeah. team to beat him at home, trailing at half. 67-1 and one now for Tom Brady. That's pretty good. I can't stand the Ravens, though, <laughs> being a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. So I think the Niners are going to pull it out. I think it's going to be 24-17 game. All right, 24-17. You got it here first. Solano closer, <laughs> Nick Alton. Hey, thanks for the time, man. Hey, thanks for having me.